Hello dear students, welcome to Dr. S. Black Medici classes. In today's class, let us learn some basic concepts about prostaglandins because prostaglandins are very important. So before studying the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, you have to learn about prostaglandins, their clinical significance and we have many pharmacological actions for prostaglandins. So let us learn about prostaglandins in detail in this lecture. So listen guys, most of us think that prostaglandins are inflammatory mediators and they cause pain, fever and inflammation. Not only that, prostaglandins are also very useful in the body. They are very important in GA tract which maintains the uh, release of the uh, acid in the GA tract and it protects the GA layer. Not only that, prostaglandins are very important in kidneys because prostaglandins maintains glomerular filtration rate GFR and it is also very important in cardiovascular system and in the brain. So prostaglandins are very important in the hospitals and we have many prostaglandin analogs as drugs which are used in peptic ulcerations and most of the time it is used. We have many uses in the glaucoma and we have prostaglandin analog used in uh, some pregnancy conditions and to induce labor and in postpartum hemorrhage so stoppage for that we have many uses about prostaglandins and let us study the some biosynthesis of prostaglandins and their pharmacological actions in this lecture listen guys prostaglandins are synthesized from a very very important uh, fatty acid it actually it is a long chain fatty acid called arachnoic acid so this is the structure of arachnoic acid and this arachnoic acid is synthesized from the phospholipids of cell membrane by a very important enzyme called phospholipase A2. Phospholipase A2 is the enzyme which converts phospholipids into arachnoic acid which is a fatty acid, long chain fatty acid. And this long chain fatty acid is the precursor which synthesizes the production of prostaglandins by few enzymes called cyclooxygenase enzyme. So cyclooxygenase enzyme converts arachnoic acid into different forms of prostaglandins and the COX enzyme is very very important in the hospital because COX is an enzyme which converts arachnoic acid into prostaglandins and by inhibition of this enzyme we have COX inhibitors. Uh, in COX inhibitors NSAIDs are very important drugs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So the drugs will inhibit COX enzyme and by that it stops production of prostaglandins. Okay, so, so in COX enzyme, actually COX enzyme has two different isoforms actually. So COX1 and COX2, cyclooxygenase 1 and cyclooxygenase 2. Listen guys, these two enzymes are very important. Among them, cyclooxygenase 1, COX1 is always present in the body. Cyclooxygenase 1 is present in blood vessels, it is present in kidneys, in the GA tract and it is also present in the platelets. So COX-1 enzyme is always present in the body and this mediates the synthesis of prostaglandin, many prostaglandin as uh, analogs, uh, prostaglandins for many pharmacological actions. And COX-2 enzyme, it is not present in the body, it induces only at particular situation it induces during inflammation of the patient during the injuries and fractures or during fever conditions infections bacterial viral and some other infections and during inflammations cox2 enzyme is induced and after induction of cox2 it produces some prostaglandins and listen this cox2 enzyme is predominantly it is also present most in some tissues like kidneys and brain all the time but cox1 is present in almost tissues all the time but cox2 is synthesized only during inflammation but in kidneys and brain it is always present so this is the different uh, the difference between cox1 and cox2 listen guys cox1 enzyme converts arachnoic acid into different forms of prostaglandins and among them prostaglandin I2, prostaglandin F2 alpha, prostaglandin E2, prostaglandin D2, thromboxanes A2 and prostaglandin E1. So these are different forms of prostaglandins and all these prostaglandins will have different pharmacological actions on different tissues. So you should understand about these specific 
prostaglandins and their specific actions on different tissues and if you know all these things we have some drug analogs actually so some specific prostaglandin analogs are used in the hospitals so we'll discuss in about that in detail isn't guys prostaglandin i2 <clears throat> so this is one of the prostaglandin and it is very commonly seen prostaglandin in the body and this prostaglandin i2 is an inhibitor of platelet aggregation so it inhibits platelet aggregation so prostaglandin i2 inhibits platelet aggregation this, this is the major pharmacological action of prostaglandin i2 and because of this pharmacological action prostaglandin i2 analogs are used during hemodialysis because in hemodialysis to reduce platelet aggregation so it has that clinical use prostaglandin i2 inhibition of platelet aggregation just remember that important point and the next one is prostaglandin f2 alpha so prostaglandin f2 alpha is mainly it relates to glaucoma remember prostaglandin f2 alpha reduces intraocular pressure in the eyes okay so because of that reason we have prostaglandin f2 alpha analogs so we have many analogs just remember just remember it as lbtv so lbtv are different examples of prostaglandin f2 alpha analogs in that l means latanoprost latano latanoprost sorry so latanoprost and b bimatoprost and t trivoprost and finally v sorry it is not v it is u so you know prostone so these are different prostaglandin f2 alpha analogs and these drugs are topically formulated and uh, they are very much used in glaucoma condition so these are the drugs which reduces intraocular pressure and these drugs are commonly used in glaucoma and these are prostaglandin f2 alpha analogs so in glaucoma actually we also use some other sympathetic and parasympathetic drugs okay so these drugs are prostaglandin analogs and uh, so this prostaglandin f2 is mainly associated with reduction of intraocular pressure so 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 this is very important in the hospitals i think you understood about prostaglandin f2 alpha and the next one is prostaglandin e2 prostaglandin e2 has many pharmacological actions the first one it contracts uterus so this is one important point and it also protects gi tract actually so in the gi tract there is a special cell called parietal cell which releases the hcl from the stomach and uh, this parietal cell will have a particular receptor called prostaglandin e2 so that by stimulation of prostaglandin e2 receptor on the parietal cell that inhibits the release of acid secretion from the parietal cell so prostaglandin e2 reduces production of hcl from the parietal cell by the actually prostaglandin e2 stimulates prostaglandin e2 receptor and by that it stops release of prostaglandin uh, it release of hcl actually from the parietal cell so prostaglandin e2 is used in peptic ulceration or in gastric ulcer situations okay so this is another important point and not only that prostaglandins are very much used in the synthesis of mucus in the gi tract so prostaglandin e2 also synthesizes excess production of mucus and that mucus is helpful as a protectant or protective layer to the mucosa and submucosa layers okay so prostaglandin e2 we have some prostaglandin e2 analogs there is a drug called misoprostol which is a prostaglandin e2 analog so misoprostol is used in peptic ulceration and it is also used in some pregnancy conditions reason guys prostaglandin e2 analogs are used in labor induction so to induce labor so that it is very important and it also used in termination of pregnancy and it is used in abortions actually in the third and fourth trimester uh, sorry in uh, the third four, third week or fourth week uh, or in the first trimester in one to two months so most of the time uh, unplanned couples use prostaglandin e2 for abortion okay so even this is a 
uh, used in abortion and it is also used in uh, postpartum hemorrhage okay so because it constricts uterus and it also reduces the bleeding okay so these are different uses of prostaglandin e2 remember prostaglandin e2 contracts uterus and it is also helpful in the gi tract by reducing gastric acid production so that is about prostaglandin e2 and the next we have prostaglandin d2 which is a vasodilatory uh, analog actually uh, vasodilatory action is done by prostaglandin d2 and the next thromboxin a2 constrict the vessels so this is the main pharmacological action as remember and the final one prostaglandin e1 so prostaglandin e1 uh, actually it is so prostaglandin e1 has a very important analog and that drug is called alprostadol alprost alprostadil sorry alprostadil is a drug which is used in erectile dysfunction actually alprostadil is a prostaglandin e1 analog so it is used in erectile dysfunction and it is mainly used in males okay so these are some of the examples of prostaglandins and different prostaglandins their pharmacological actions and uh, their analogs and their uses so these are different prostaglandin analogs and yeah we discussed about cox1 actually cox1 converts arachnoic acid into different prostaglandins and cox1 is always present in the body and the next form of cyclooxygenase enzyme is cox2 as we have discussed cox2 actually it converts arachnoic acid into different prostaglandins and this drug is induced only during inflammation and it produces prostaglandins thromboxanes okay and especially it also produces tnf alpha which is a very strong anti inflammatory uh, inflammatory mediator and some other inflammatory mediators okay so this enzyme is usually induced during inflammation and it causes pain inflammation and fever so this cox2 has major function uh, so it causes fever inflammation and pain so this is very important so during the inflammation pain and uh, pain and fever we have some specific drugs called cox2 inhibitors so we'll discuss in the next class so we'll discuss about uh, nsaids their uh, different we have specific nsaids and non specific nsaids so actually uh, in non specific nsaids will inhibit both cox1 and cox2 whereas specific one will inhibit only cox2 so no, uh, sp specific cox2 inhibitors are very much used in the hospitals in the reduction of inflammation so that is about the prostaglandins and their biosynthesis and different analogs of prostaglandins and their clinical significance in the hospitals i think you learned about prostaglandins in this class and in next class i'll discuss about nsaids and their different pharmacological actions uses and adrs listen guys prostaglandins should strictly contraindicated contraindicated in pregnancy conditions because they causes abortion and they are also contraindicated in hypotension hypotension because they cause vasodilation especially prostaglandin d2 is contraindicated in hypotension okay so we have some drawbacks also about prostaglandins and most of the time prostaglandins are not commonly used because uh, because of these adrs okay so listen guys if you learned something from this video please don't forget to subscribe and like our channel and uh, keep following our videos and in the next class we'll make a video on nsids okay thank you for watching